Damn these couplings. We need something much more secure. Hang on. Where'd the truck go? Bust my buffers! Where on earth am I? Oh no! My emergency brakes are failing! Yikes! Maybe breaking away from Thomas's train wasn't such a good idea after all. I've got you now, Davros. You can't possibly escape. I've found the Dalek's secret weapon and I will destroy it. You are a fool, Doctor. Destroy him! The Doctor has been found. He will be exterminated. Prepare the oversized Dalek exterminator. I applaud your attempts, Dalek. But with my strange golf ball shaped sonic screwdriver, I will stop you. There is no way to defeat me unless you discover the strangely inbuilt trapdoor in the floor. The floor! Uh-oh. This isn't going to end well. I guess subtlety isn't something that comes with being the supreme rulers of the galaxy. But you know what, I've never been a trapdoor kind of person. I've been always been more of a kaboom kind of guy. Error! Error! The Doctor has discovered the secret trapdoor! The time has come for me to reveal myself, Doctor. You may have destroyed my Dalek drone, but you will not stop me from creating the ultimate weapon to rule the galaxy! Davros, I won't let you take control of the rest of the Bluebird universe. This ends here. It's too late, Doctor. Activate Bluebird's signature play case ultimate weapon! Exterminate! Exterminate Doctor Who! Doctor Who? It's just the Doctor. <laughs> Now, as most of you would know, I'm quite a big fan of the miniature Bluebird Thomas series. And then, as a great YouTuber pointed out to me, there is actually other sets that Bluebird made, and they don't just make Thomas. See, this is a bit dusty, it needs nice dust. Anyway, and so that got me thinking, well, what else has Bluebird done? And so, after only a few minutes on eBay, I discovered something that made me very, very, very excited. Yes, that's right. In the Bluebird Micro Superstars collection, Doctor Who, featuring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor in the Domain of the Daleks, was created. As you can see, this is actually uh, mint in packaging, hasn't been opened. I'm going to go through and like wreck that and open it. But anyway, so, come with me and let's discover some more of this mysterious Bluebird world that ever since we ever go deeper into figuring out what it's actually about, we realise we get more questions than answers. So in terms of the box, we've got that same kind of blister packaging that we've seen in the other Bluebird sets. Now, interestingly enough, this one tells us that the actual closed-up version of this, as you can see, turns into a 3D Dalek, which is really nice. Um, it's definitely got that really classic kind of feel. Like, it feels like Doctor Who, and it feels like Bluebird, and it feels like it's come from the time that it was made. What's interesting is that despite this being made, if we turn it over in 1997, they've actually picked the fourth Doctor. So we did actually have with all the Doctors up to eight by this point. But the fourth Doctor was the one they, one they picked to make into a set. Now, I'm assuming that's because the fourth Doctor is probably still the best well-known Doctor, so that's why they picked him. But anyway, let's have a look what we've got here. The Domain of the Daleks. The TARDIS has materialised aboard a Dalek battlecruiser. Can the Doctor stop Davros and the Daleks from achieving universal domination? There you go. So we've got a little story going on here. You can just pause if you want to read all the text. There you go. There you go. You can come down and see all this legal information. Again, we can see it's made by Bluebird Toys. And then we can see the different distributors in the other nations. Interestingly enough, this one doesn't actually refer to Ertl. So I feel like this may or may not have actually been released in America. I feel like possibly not. Um, so that's a bit interesting. The thing I find most interesting about this picture is it's really, really different to what you actually end up getting. If you just want to, like, for example... Okay, so let's have a look at the inside of this building and the TARDIS. And we'll flip over what we get in the actual set. It's, there's no red lines, Davros' head is, in, is just like kind of brownie grey, and the TARDIS has a lot more details on it, thank goodness, in this version. Another great example is the colour of this little shooty thing. If we turn that over, we can see here that it's actually a white. 
So, again, we can see Bluebird um, have kind of got a prototype and put that on the box as opposed to the final set, which, as I've explained with most of my character building reviews, I really don't think that's very appropriate for toy companies to do that. Because although they, you know, if you go down here and we go, mm -mm -mm, only use the missile providers, colours and contents may vary from those illustrated. No! No, they shouldn't. If you're going to redesign something and different colour it, then you should re-release the packaging. Like, is it really that hard? So I don't really like the way they do that. But, however, I will forgive it because it's Bluebird. Um, what was the most interesting part about the box is this. And now it actually turns out the Bluebird in the Superstars reign didn't just make Doctor Who. There's Wallace and Gromit. There's the Muppets. There's the Hulk. There's Spider-Man. There was a whole series of Star Wars ones, which were actually made not by Bluebird, but another company in this same style. So... I'm kind of a little bit excited because there's heaps of really cool micro things to collect now, and that's super exciting. And so, yeah, the Walton Grant ones look particularly awesome. Um, and in case you didn't know, Bluebird also did all the original Polly Pocket toys. And so there's a massive range of Polly Pocket toys that have this same kind of style. You know, they fold up and they're really small and micro and all that kind of stuff, which I don't know if I've mentioned in my other reviews. So come on, let's actually get into this and open it up and find out what's inside without possibly destroying this, you know, 15 year old toy. But toys are meant to be played with. Let's go, out of the box. So I've managed to extract this from the packaging, a little bit more difficult than the Bluebird ones, and I think it's it's just very proper that we start with the uh, outside of this case, and it looks like awesome. Like that is just really cool. Not only does it look nice, I mean obviously it's a bit stretched, and like not quite the proportions, but if we look at it from the front, it just looks very, very nice. You've got the moving eye stalk, it's like got a ratcheting system, so it stays where it is. The, um, this little, the laser exterminator gun thing, I should know the proper name for this as a Doctor Who fan, but anyway, this moves around, and then the plunger, which I must say, I'll be is a little bit, probably too long, um, but then the, the old-fashioned ones did have very long plungers, so that's kind of true. This also moves around, and actually comes out, so that when the set opens up, it doesn't get in the way. But this definitely, as it stands, looks very, very cool, and I just, yeah, that is just awesome, compared to... The um, somewhat lacklustre Thomas ones, is it, there's a comparison for you right there with an old Thomas one. So much dust, oh my goodness. Anyway, so you can see the Thomas one comparatively is quite plain, but, you know, that was a different kind of theme. And it's obviously this one is wider, but um, this one is taller, so you kind of see that same kind of shape there. But you can definitely tell they're made by the same company. So definitely for like a toy like this, this is a very impressive job, and I, I'm quite impressed by the way that they've managed to pull something like this off so that it actually does look quite decent from most front-facing angles, considering that this is only, like, you know, the outside of the playset and not what you're actually buying the set for. Now, just like when we open up the Thomas ones, there's a bit of construction you have to do. This kind of have to, has to lift up, and then you can pull out the uh, shooty thing. This kind of comes down. Now, because it's not flat, it doesn't quite sit, like, properly. So if you kind of sit it like that, I feel like it probably should sit like this. Uh, but thankfully the hinge is tight enough so that you can actually position it like that. Um, so I think first and foremost, I need to look at like the features of this set. So first of all, we've got this top room up here. Um, now apparently this is based off the episode, I think, Remembrance of the Daleks, but someone can probably correct me, I haven't seen a lot of classic series, Doctor Who, so I'm sure someone out there will know from what this episode's based on. Now apparently this is the Emperor Dalek, and then as I said, you reveal Davros underneath there, opens up and <gasps> Davros, he's a very... I can't even, can't even capture the details on camera because I really can't even see them in real life. They're, he's very, like, deformed and defigured. And it's quite nice. It's good. I think that maybe a little bit more details for the eyes could have been nice, but, like, there's so much detail on this already. Like, I don't really mind. That's very nice. We come down here. We got the, the classic TARDIS. Now, this is a really awesome-looking TARDIS. I mean, the windows shouldn't really be that yellow, but to be honest, like, I don't care because it looks really nice. Now, we kind of pull these apart. They clip apart like so. And then, oh, the round things. There you go. You get them open. You can see the round things in there, which is beautiful. And then we go in there and there's a little picture of the inside of the old classic console. So that's really, really nicely done. Very, very well done in there in terms of a TARDIS. So we're just going to close that back up and then kind of click back together again. We've got a little bit of design on the wall here. It's a radiator vent and that's a little control panel or something the TARDIS is materialized in. Whoopsie. You can see that this is a bit hard to kind of hold in position I'm filming. Um, now we come down to the bottom ramp section. This ramp, as I said before, detaches, so it kind of lifts up and down. Oh my goodness, this is such a hard item to review. Anyway, it kind of clicks into position. Um, this can rotate. This is a cannon, which you use to fire this. Now, it doesn't actually fire. You just kind of put it in, and then 
you know, flick it like that. So there's no like spring mechanism here. But you get the idea, and I didn't realise that this actually is meant to be a giant Dalek head, if you look at it like that. It's got a really big eye stalk, but it is meant to be a Dalek head. Uh, that is a little pathway. You can see that trolley goes down there. Um, we come to this platform here. This platform also lifts up. You lift up this one, get it out of the way. You can come down into here and lift this one up as well, if you want to. We've got some really nice control panel details down underneath the ramp. That's really well done. And then we've got this here, which is a secret function or something. That the Doctor, for some reason, knows and the, the Daleks don't. And you go, Pshh! the Dalek gets launched into oblivion. So that just sits like that. And then it just kind of clicks back into place. So it's not going to um, just open. Never mind, I lied. It is just going to open. Um, but that's only if the button falls down as well. So you can see the button is a little thing that's holding it up there. So now you've seen what the place looks like naked, so to speak. Do you, do you say that? Naked? I guess. We can have a look at the little figures and how they actually work on this playset. This is the Dalek. It's um, one of the old style Daleks with a little bit less design. Now, it doesn't move, it doesn't have any articulation, but it's very, very nice. If you get an idea of the scale here, I can get like one of the uh, character building Daleks and put it right next to it. You can get an idea of how small this thing actually is. It's very impressive. Um, and in character, true character building, character building, goodness me, in true Bluebird style, it's actually got a ball bearing on the bottom, which is nice. And so that allows you to kind of roll it around a bit more freely than if it was just flat on the bottom. But I have to say, for a Dalek of this size, it is very, very nicely done. And it just, ah, oh, there's just something about it which looks really, really cool. So kudos to uh, Bluebird for getting that right. Now, the uh, Tom Baker, he's, he's an interesting one. I don't think he's quite got the standard scarf. It's not the rainbow one, but it's the other one. He has two scarves, and this is the other one. That also came with the 50th anniversary character building set. He's in some pose. Now, I think this is meant to be his sonic screwdriver. I'm trying to show it there. It's just kind of like a ball coming out of his hand. So probably not the best sonic screwdriver I've seen. Kind of looks like he's holding like a maraca or a microphone, you know, the voice style or something. Um, and he's got little painted on eyes. I'm trying to show you his face there and a nose. He doesn't actually have a mouth painted on, but he does have the eyes, so I think that works. I think the stance is good. I think the fact that he's kind of like in a lunging, attacking stance. Oh, if we want to focus, that would be really nice. There we go. I think that stance is really good. It's a very Doctor-ish stance. Um, and so I think when you look at them on the set, the only issue is they don't really like sit anywhere. Like, there's not really anywhere for them to fit. Uh, there's this little platform here, but he doesn't really stand up on it. You can see because it's not quite even. So there you can get him standing like that. He's a bit of a menace to stand because of the way he's balanced. But what is nice is we can do this with the Dalek. We can put him up the top of the ramp and then... Ooh, it's coming after chasing off the Doctor and then... Dead. So that is a very nice feature. Um, as I said, because of the size of the figures, they can't don't have a lot of compatibility. Like, nothing fits up here except Davros, of course. And if we open this up... Oh, you hear that grunting of the plastic as it just groans... Um, we can actually just fit him inside the TARDIS. Oh, goodness me. Like that. He does fit inside there. But the actual playability on the set is kind of limited because of the way it's designed. But still, the figures, they feel like they belong in this set. And so, they definitely did a good job with, with that in that regard. So now we've had a look at the set in all its glory. I guess it really comes down to what do I actually think about this set on a whole, as a whole. And I really think that in terms of the Bluebird line, it's very Bluebird. It feels like a Bluebird set. It looks like a Bluebird set. It does a very good job of trying to achieve, which is a compact playset idea. Um, in terms of playability, I do think the Thomas ones um, have more playability. I think Thomas himself had the most because he had the full loop. James was a little bit less so because the train couldn't go all the way around because of Harold's landing pad. So... It doesn't quite have the playability of the others, as I said, because, you know, of its different design, the fact that we've got this kind of vertical and horizontal 90-degree design, there's not a lot of space to actually put the figures on there. But I think they're, you know, if you carry them around, you can take, you know, little Dalek and Tom Baker Doctor on all kinds of adventures, and I think there's still a surprising large amount of, you know, movement. You know, we've got this that opens and closes. You've got the opening doors detailed on the inside. We've got this thing that can shoot out. We've got this ramps that move and the exploding piece of path. So I still think it's packed full of play features. I just don't think it has the same playability that some of the other Bluebird sets that I own have. In saying that though, in terms of doing a micro scale complete Doctor Who playset, I'm pretty sure this is, you know, as good as you can possibly get it. And again, 
um, as I've said in my other Bluebird reviews, if we look back on the packet, it says 4 plus here. You might not be able to see because it get ripped in half. 4 plus. And I, do, do we really think that, like, these days you'd be able to sell something like this to a 4 plus child? I feel like not. I don't feel like you'd be allowed to do that anymore. Um, which is a pity because these are, like, the awesome toys. And I'm definitely, like, adding to my collect list, uh, these Bluebird kind of sets because they are really, really nice, really well done. And I think they're the kind of thing that we just don't have anymore. These, you know, toy sets that, you know, aren't just about, you know, having cheap characters and making them really robust in the sense. But they're really about giving, you know, really good play value and portability. And to be honest, these are the kind of sets which just kick take and play, like, to the street. Take and play? No. This is true take and play. This is what, if Take and Play would actually go with its name, and all those kind of, you know, pocket lines. Polly Pocket, you know, actually used to be able to fit in your pocket. That's where the name came from. And after Mattel took over, that, that completely changed. Polly Pocket became, like, you know, little Barbie kind of, you know, uh, pony kind of scale. And no, that's not Polly Pocket. It doesn't fit in your pocket. And so these Superstar collections are looking really promising. It's really exciting. I recommend this to any collector of Bluebird, any collector of micro things, any collector of Doctor Who, it's definitely something I would say is a must-have item because it's just so impressive. Um, they are a bit on the pricey side. I think I paid £30 for that, which when you think about when it's probably, like it was probably a $20 toy back in the day, £30 is about $50. Or was it, no, hang on, it was about $60 for the whole thing. So I think it was, yeah, about 40 Australian dollars to buy, however many pounds that is, you don't quote me because exchange rates and things. So obviously, you know, I paid a premium for it, but I mean, for one that was mint in box, um, had never been opened, never been played with, it's very impressive, and it's just such a cool set. And so anyway, I've been blabbling on for long enough, so now let me know what you think about this set. Would you buy this set? Would you be interested in seeing other sets of this kind, not so much Doctor Who, but as I said, there was Wallace and Gromit, there's Superman, um, there was... Uh, Star Wars ones, although by a different brand, based on the same concept. So yeah, let me know what you think. Comment, rate, subscribe, do all those things that people do on YouTube. Um, I'm going to use this opportunity to make another shout out to Leo Kim Video because I this is filmed the day after I found out that I was actually the top fan prize and got those three Thomases. Um, so I just want to thank him for being like awesomely awesome. And there'll probably be a separate video. There'll be multiple separate videos about that. Just putting that out there. Um, and don't forget to head over and as I said, there'll be a link either in the description or if you go to my channel, there's a link there. Or just head to www.demetriuschild.com and you'll find all the links about Stories of Earth World War III, which is my book, as you probably already know. So if you want to support me to keep making cool stuff, you can head over there and grab a copy of that because it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Anyway, so that's enough rambling from me. And as always, thanks for watching and that's all we've got time for from Trains Extreme.